What would be the evolutionary implications of using masks in the way we breathe and with regard to our facial recognition system? Mm. Yeah. Um, both of these are important. Um, well, actually, facial recognition, I'll say, is clearly important. And I think I've said here before that I'm, I was super worried, especially when I saw young kids out um, when everyone was still masked. Um, mostly the very young kids I saw were not masked, although I saw exceptions to that too outside, you know, like it's just, just so sad. But, um, but almost all the adults they were seeing were masked. And those children were going through some critical developmental period, um, seeing only the people who they lived with presumably unmasked, and then the occasional weirdo like me who'd walk by unmasked. And like I was just, I was getting stares from these little children outside in an, in the era from like you know March of last year through yesterday practically, when um, I was always masked inside in public spaces with strangers, but I was never masked outside. And I was often the only one who wasn't masked outside and these children would just look at me and it wasn't in horror. It was in like eagerness is what I read in their eyes. Right. Like, oh my God, that's another one of us. And I want to see what it looks like. Um, and uh, it's just devastating for the children, I'm sure. It's devastating. And actually, if we can step back into a conversation, it's in our book and we've, I think we've talked about it on the podcast too. Um, there's this one tantalizing result from uh, many years ago in which there was a question about whether or not autism was triggered by screen time. Mm -hmm. And the way I've interpreted that result and the way we discuss it in the book uh, is that the thing about a screen, especially, um, I think we talk about cartoons uh, in the book, but a screen that is capable of projecting the image of a human being that's very compelling looking. and Or humanoid. Right. A humanoid. Yeah. But that does not respond, right? Two humans who sit, right, exchange a lot of information that isn't vocal, right? There's a lot of facial expression stuff that indicates stuff that we can't even prevent, right, about emotional state and things like that. So for a child, learning to do that game, learning to exchange information emotionally, a screen is a very paradoxical entity because it broadcasts the information, but it's, it's read only. And so... <clears throat> There's a question about if masks are going to have some of this influence too, where the emotions are literally masked so yeah. that children who are developing their capacity to read them are not getting nearly as much information. I do think, I mean, it's it's different, I don't know, better or worse, but it's different than say, uh, you know, a, a cartoon that has the expressions but is never responsive to the actual child watching, um, which is that there's just an absence of information. So it's, you know, is, is pure absence without the possibility for a misfire on the signal worse or is, um, you know, seeing emotional things, seeing the full gamut ish of emotional possibilities, but having them applied um, at random relative to your, the engager, um, engagement with them worse. I think actually that's probably still worse. Well, it's, it's a yeah. really interesting question. I could see it going either way. I think, yeah. I think it's a very important question. I would add one other thing though. Like I'm now, because masks outside are so pointless, yeah. um, I'm beginning to see them as more metaphorical and they're frightening, right? In the sense that lots of humans are, you know, not broadcasting uh, these signals that are so much a part of functioning. Yeah. And one thing I'm beginning to wonder about is I'm also watching other things happen that were, were true long before the mask thing happened. So I know the masks aren't causal, but I think they're consistent with, which is 10 years ago, right? There was a way of broadcasting to a stranger that you were not a threat. Right, mm -hmm. there was a way of signaling that this is a friendly inter interaction, and you don't need to worry. Right, yep. and this was a normal part of walking down the goddamn street. And there were cities in which it wasn't, in which people did not exchange any sort of smile or whatever as they passed. And those places were always jarring. But in much of the world, it was just simply expected that you would signal, even just signaling anything, and not having anger or frustration or tension in your voice would let somebody breathe easier. And or blankness. Right. What I get now, and I hate this as a man, I hate it, right? Anytime I am in the world and I encounter a woman I don't know walking the other side of the street, in the elevator, whatever it is, there's this question about whether or not I'm a menace. Now, I understand that that's a, a natural question, 
but it used to be something for which the tools to dispel the question were readily available. Mm -hmm. And I don't find them readily available at all. If you're anymore. asked. Uh, not even that, because there's the averting of the eyes. Oh, yeah. Right? So it's like the point is the channel is not even open. And actually, I had this experience. Uh, it was so bewildering. Okay, I was in this hotel in Austin. And it's one of these hotels that you need to use your key card to ride in the elevator. And I got in the elevator. A woman had just gotten in the elevator before me, right? She used her card and then she hit the same floor as I was going to. So there was no need for me to hit the any button. I didn't need to use my card. So she didn't know whether I was legitimately in the elevator or not, mm -hmm. right? Because I was traveling to her floor. There was no good way of signaling, I'm not a creep. This is just a coincidence that I'm going to your floor, right? Yeah. I literally did not know what to do because the entire ride in the elevator was just full of this tension. Like you just got in the elevator. I know you need a key card to use this elevator. You didn't pull out your key card. And it was like, I was just helpless. There was nothing I could do to let yeah. her know that this, you know. And so I actually just let her get out of the elevator. And I stayed in the elevator bank until she had long gotten into her room so she wouldn't find me following her down the hall. But it's yeah. like, what kind of world are we living in that you can't signal to a stranger, hey, don't worry? That's terrible. Um, elevators are always potentially fraught this way, right? Like, I mean, especially elevators in hotels and, and women traveling alone. You know, it's it, there's there's always been an issue. And I'm not sure, I'm not sure what, in a, you know, 10 years ago, you could have communicated that would have, um, I mean, I, I guess you could have just. I could have just said something. But not now. It's so fraught that the yeah, point is because yeah. a bad person will lie. And so the information isn't contained in what's said. It's contained in the fact that it's disarming in the way you say it. Mm -hmm. Right. Now the tension is so high that the attempt to disarm is like a, an attempt to disarm. And that's yeah. frightening. And it's like, can we please just go back to a place where we don't? You know, we don't take it on faith that somebody else is safe to interact with, but that is our bias, mm -hmm. right? Somebody is safe until they do something that suggests they are not. Yeah. And you leave open the possibility of totally trivial conversation. A conversation about the fucking weather would have been useful in this case. Yeah. No, I mean, I think that's right. I mean, this is, there, there's not going to be a universal answer. And, you know, if you've got like trust everyone and trust no one, right? Yep. Um, we're, most of us are going to fall somewhere in here, right? And the, which one was which? Trust everyone, trust no one. Did I just reverse it? Trust no, everyone, you, trust no one. Um, and the sort of the, we are told and we were informed in part by like the Me Too movement and such that this slider has to move over here, that we have to trust everyone less. And there, you know, <clears throat> I think women in general, as is, should be expected, will 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 be reading the world differently because the threats are different. And frankly, a hotel a hotel elevator is a particularly fraught and potentially dangerous environment. And um, at some level, you know, she pressed that button while you were already in the elevator. That's kind of a signal um, that either she's not reading the situation at all, or she's kind of looked at you and been like, not a threat. Because in general, a lone woman, a lone man in an elevator, um, a woman doesn't press the floor first. Like you don't signal where it is, you know, where it is that you're going to, you know, almost no matter what. And like, that that's just, that that's an unfortunate part about being, you know, a a woman being alone in the world at that moment. Like, I didn't know that. Yeah, I, mean, I know, get it. Yeah. I get it, and I've heard I've heard women say like, things like, um, you know, apparently some men were confused by why a, a woman wouldn't walk away from her drink at the bar, and some woman said, "How are you missing this?" I was like, "Holy crap! I've never heard that." Um, but of course, so th I mean, this is what Me Too was supposed to do, right? right? Like, it and was. like, and and Frank, like, you and I have been together forever, and. Some of the stuff that even even between us, like it, it's just like I, I, of course, and like you that, should fill that in. I think I don't know what you're saying yet. Well, no, I mean like the elevator thing and the drink at the bar. Oh, you thing. would think like, that's obvious to me, but it's not. Yeah, yeah, and 
you know, this is exactly what Me Too was supposed to do. Yeah. This is exactly what it was supposed to do. And it got hijacked and maybe it started out hijacked, like maybe BLM started out hijacked and it just had the good sounding stuff. Like I I don't actually have the sense of what the thing behind Me Too was, but it had the potential to exactly inform the vast majority of men who are awesome and who couldn't freaking, you know, follow Fathom a woman it, yeah. to her hotel room and hurt her for you know for anything they just wouldn't but inform them of what it is actually to walk around going like actually i'm paying attention i'm not going to put that information into that guy's head because i don't know who that guy is okay, okay. i'm not going to inform him of what floor i'm going right to. but he, yeah. okay so i know this is perfectly consistent with what you just said it's not yeah. a counterpoint but yeah. um the greatest asset to women in a world where most men are not bad, but bad men are common enough that you have to constantly be on your guard. Let me just rephrase that for a second. Sorry. The way that I've said that is the vast majority of men aren't bad, but the vast majority of women have interacted with a bad, with bad man. men. Yes. Yeah. The best asset in that case is all of those men who aren't bad out there, mm -hmm. right? And their ability to uh, participate in a social agreement that w women need to be protected from those rare bad men, right? right? Cutting off the line of communication so that I cannot write it. I mean, believe me, if anybody has the skills to, to signal that I am not a threat in a freaking elevator, I've got those skills in spades. I couldn't figure out how to do it in this case. In yeah. fact, now, many days later, I know what I should have done. What? And it would have been a flat out lie. <laughs> I should have taken my key card out. I should have used it on the elevator and I should have pressed a floor somewhere else. That's what I actually, as you were telling the story, I was like, well, this is what he's going to do, right? It didn't occur to me at the time. Yeah. So I'm, it absolutely, and so unless if I had been that woman in that elevator and yep. never met you and didn't know you on site or something, right? Like, yep. um, you know, you're a totally anonymous random dude in a hotel. Like, A, it's in a hotel, so it's not just a, a, a you know, a random high rise in a city where anyone can walk in. So it's right. a little bit more protected. And it's possible, you know, there there've definitely been situations where I just like, oh, yeah, he's fine. Like you know, this, yeah. this guy's no problem at all. But in general, I wouldn't have put the information into your head where I'm going. Um, but if I had not, um, or if, you know, if you, and I don't know, you're trying to be a gentleman or you're trying to get the information. Oh, after you, after you, miss, ma'am, whatever it is yeah. they want to call me, um, I put it on the wrong floor. Like if, right. if, if someone invites me to give them information that I've already decided I don't want to give them, I'm going to give them bad information. Well, it's actually, so I'm trying to remember exactly what happened. Yeah. I, we're spending a lot of time here, but I sort of think it's worth it. Yeah. Um, so it happened to be the top floor that that elevator went to, right? That's where mm. I was, and that's the floor that she pressed. Was there also public stuff on that floor then, like a restaurant or a gym or something? Nothing, just rooms. Okay. Um, now, it's possible if I were in her shoes and I didn't trust that I just gotten into an elevator with some guy who, in this case, could have just walked in off the street. There was no bar to getting in this elevator. Okay. The bar was the key card to your ability to go to a floor, right? Mm-hmm. Mm so if I was her and I was being clever, I might have pressed the top floor with the thought he has to get out of the elevator somewhere before that floor, right? Mm -hmm. um, in any case, I, I don't think that can be right because I think she, I, as I said, I waited in the elevator yeah. bank until she had cleared the hallway. I guess she could have gone into the stairs and gone down or she went into a room, which is what I think she did. Mm -hmm. But nonetheless, the point is, what kind of crazy world are we living in where somebody who means you no harm can't simply broadcast that information and then you can evaluate it? You don't have to believe it. Well, so, you know, the different thresholds that, that women will have, you know, and, and, and men will just ha engage this differently because the kinds of things that will, bad things that will happen to me, to men will be a different, a different set of, of horrible things. Um, the, the threshold that we choose individually as as women is going to be based on a number of things our personal experience and our um you know our capacity our imagined capacity for reading someone and for you know spending just a half second going like oh yeah i think he's fine um and i think that thing that sort of i'm actually going to look and engage and do the assessment that's part of what is just like being flattened and so if we're not expecting people we're not we're not we're not expecting people and people aren't learning how to do that sort of assessment and you know again you know 
a year and a half of COVID and social isolation and masks and like we we got that problem in spades now, um, then I would guess that there would be yes less and less opportunity um, and to to actually for you as a man to engage with a woman who might be a little like I, I don't know what he's what he's doing. Um, but you know the other thing that is true is that you know from forever, not just in this modern environment, um, the best intentioned, most awesome man who just wants to be gracious and signal that he's not a threat, and so you know can't we just be human together? Uh, may so, may still set someone's spidey senses off, sure. off, and you know what? If she gives you misinformation, if she wants to have nothing to, like you know this, in, unless. If, if it's a you know if it's if it's an elevator ride like if it's something that it doesn't have any reason to extend, um, you know, be a little irritated that she didn't see the awesome that you were, but no, no, like no. let her go and do oh, what she I'm has not, to do. Look, if somebody's nervous; they have the right to do what they right. have to do in order to get out of the situation, feel as safe as they can, as quick as they can. I don't. I'm not saying she doesn't have a right to whatever tool she needs to get to there. My point is. How did we end up where the total toolkit for navigating these okay. things and, and diffusing them isn't available to us? And I actually think it goes to a point that you were making last week, right, about the binariness of the choices that we are given, mm, right? Yeah. In a world where either you do or do not believe that all men are toxic, right, right, right. then yeah. <clears throat> you have no way to learn this. And I guess my point would be there's an intermediate to the guy who's really dangerous in the elevator, me, not mm -hmm. dangerous at all, no threat of any kind. Mm -hmm. There's an intermediate, right? Yeah. There's a guy who's interested, but he's not a threat, right? right. And so my yes. point is a woman who, who is able to practice learning, you know, whether somebody is threatening, isn't threatening, or is somewhere in between, right, is interested, but is not going to push the matter, mm -hmm. right? That's a, once you've seen the spectrum of reactions, then you can begin to get good at recognizing whether somebody is in one category or the other or somewhere in the middle. And you'll be better not only at avoiding danger and harm and risk to yourself, um, right. but also more likely to actually end up with interactions and possibly relationships and enrich your life. Right. right. So in some sense, what I'm perceiving is driving me crazy because basically the point is, well, until I know, until I have evidence that you're not a threat, I'm simply going to not only treat yeah. you as one, but yeah. assume that you are one, right? right? Um, that is a manifestation of a very broken developmental process where women okay. don't get a chance to figure out how to sort the vast majority of men who are not uh, a threat mm -hmm. from the few that are, who mm -hmm. are way too common to be ignored. And the larger number included in that first category, as you say, who um, are not a threat, but are, you know, maybe interested in pushing their luck a little bit to see if maybe she really is interested. Right. And, you know, some women will be sometimes interested in playing that game. And a lot of women will be like, could you please leave me the fuck alone? Right. Right. But nonetheless, on, on both sides of that interaction, yeah. there is learning to be done. Yeah. And if we go around you know, prosecuting every man, right, who pushes his luck just a tiny bit too far, then yeah. nobody, you know, the men don't learn. Right. Uh, yeah. No one learns. Right. Yeah. We're, we're just, we go backwards. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. That was an unexpected answer to a question about masks. <laughs> right. So. <laughs> yes. Let that be a lesson to you. Don't wear your mask outside and, I don't know, look people in the eye enough to figure out whether they seem menacing. Indeed.